guys, welcome back to JT Outdoors. Today we're talking about food blocks. I'll show you some of the ingredients here that we put into these food blocks for the deer. Here we got just some full kernel corn. Just got it from the local farmer. And then here we got some oats. You can also buy like quick oats and stuff, but I prefer using just regular oats like they do with cattle and stuff. Them two we don't use as much of. These next two are pretty big ingredients. We got some dried molasses here. And we got some poultry layer concentrate. It's very good with the calcium. Helps the deer get all their vitamins and all that stuff they need in there. And over here we got some salt or sugar. Just some granular sugar there. Helps the stuff stick together. And here's that quick oats, just. But then up here, you got a regular utensils you need. You got spatulas and stuff, pot holders, that's a big one. And then your pans. We like to keep the big pans, that way we can get all we can into them so we're not shoving so many pans in there at a time. And over here, you got our corn syrup. It also stuff really stick together good. Helps it pack into the buckets good. You got your vegetable oil. And then you gotta have a lot of buckets when you're making food blocks like this. Especially when you wanna put the numbers of food blocks out there. And last but not least, you need a, something to pound the block in. We just use a regular tamper like we use for putting fence in and but that's about all you need when you're making food blocks. It just takes a little time and effort and you can really turn out some pretty good blocks. All right guys, we're here at the first step here. We take this poultry layer concentrate and dry molasses and we, we alternate until we get four cups of each in the bucket. One, one, one. Two, two. You could also just dump all four of one in at a time and just keep it that way. We like to do this so it gets mixed a little bit while we do it here. Three. Pretty well, repeat the process until you get your bucket to your desired amount that you want your block to make. Depending on how big of blocks you uh, you want, you can keep going more. What would you say, more bigger block? Yeah. We're gonna repeat this process one more time. You can also kind of make the formula up to however you want. You can also just add more molasses and poultry layer concentrate, or you can go down and add more corn and oats. It just depends what your formula wants and however you want to make it. This 
block since we since we got enough corn and oats. We're going to do an extra scoop for each one. Corn is pretty high in protein, gives that deer extra boost in protein and help them through the winter. And then the next step is we're going to mix this and you can use your tamper for it or you can mix it in a bucket. I'll demonstrate the bucket first. You just take your an empty bucket and you just slowly pour that in. Mix them another two or three times, depending on how how much or how often you would like. You could stir it in between this to help mix a little better, but this saves your arms a little bit better if you're making a lot more blocks. Than... Time we're going to want to start preheating your oven. Yeah. So we'll set the oven. I'll have to and show you. Ethan, we'll set it to. You want to preheat your oven? The temperature that you just put it on, and then we'll explain the bacon a little later. But then you get your pans ready. Then you take some towels, which I'll go grab quick. Now uh, you got your towel, just take it, push it around, cover the whole pan the best you can. Don't have to be completely drenched, just enough to get it damp. Helps prevent it getting a little sticky so then the, all the ingredients don't stick to the side or the bottom of the pan and then you can't get it out. Good. All right. It's nice to have a garbage garbage can at hand. We'll just use this empty bucket. You can always reuse these. Right. We'll hop to the next step. That's when you pour your ingredients into the pan. You 
want to, you know, evenly layer them. You don't want one big blob. One pan fits, two pans fits one whole bucket. Five gallon bucket of feed. Try to keep them the even we can. That way when you cook them, you're not getting one that's packed full and then you get one that's got not much in it, so. Next step is we'll, we'll be adding your corn syrup and your vegetable oil to that. One cup of corn syrup. How many ounces is that? This is 32 fluid ounces. Yeah, we can use one for the block head sake. Yeah. This kind of helps desire or the stickiness that you'd like, so. You'll just split this bottle evenly between both the pans. You'll do one per block. One thing that can help, if you have to, you can take the label off to be able to see. But with these, they're kind of handy. They have an open back. Get out a little bit more. Then just add the next half to that next pan. Two pans equals one block, so. have to. Another good thing is to just leave it angled up while you add your vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. yep. Fill one cup up with vegetable oil. This is per pan. Kind of spread it out like you do with the corn syrup. Evenly disperse it. Another cup. Disperse that in this pan as well. Out. See how you get a lot of excess if you tip it up? You really don't want to leave that in there because then you, you're wasting corn syrup at that point. The next step would be mix it. Then you just want to take your spatula, you know, any utensil that works best. And this is, you got to be careful with this because it can easily spill. But you really want to mix that corn syrup and vegetable oil, oil in. Get it nice and sticky. Fold it in, stir it in, however, however you like. Doesn't matter as long as it gets.
we'll mix it like this. And you'll see it'll start to clump up eventually the more you mix it in. Alright, now that we got this uh, mixed up with the corn syrup, you can see it's more gumbo-like, sticky, thicker. We are now, the next step would be taking them into the oven, but we want to make sure our edges are cleaned off so that it's not falling into your oven when you're trying to pick them off. Set your utensil aside. We got the oven at 350. We're just going to set them in. Careful. Don't burn yourself. Set one in. Put the bottom one in. Now we're going to set a timer for 15 minutes. Now, while you're waiting for them to cook, it's a good thing to take your bucket, take your rag. Your rag's already dosed in vegetable oil. You want to line the sides of the bucket with vegetable oil. This allows for you know an easy block pull out, tip it upside down, and just falls out. And I'm actually going to add a little bit more vegetable oil. No, it doesn't have to be a lot. Just a little dab. Mix that around the bottom. This makes it way easier, way quieter when you drop your plant the top and your blocks off out in the field. Put that back in the garbage. Set that aside. Wait for them to cook. All right, while we're letting that cook, one thing you could be doing is mixing more, but we'll talk to you about the importance of these food blocks. You know, Ethan and I just got done checking trail cameras and I mean it took two weeks for these deer to eat up these blocks. That's how much they love them. You know, during the winter there's not as much food. So in turn, these blocks are like little pieces of heaven for them. You know, we've had seven, eight deer on a mm -hmm. block at once. Yeah. There's also when it when it snows, you tend to get a lot more pictures on these deer. When the snow's covering all their other food sources, they come to these, focus on them when they spend a lot of time there. Yes. And also about your trail cameras, when you come and to put these on food blocks and stuff, you kind of want to watch the settings you got it on. It means they're going to be in front of the camera, usually a little longer. You'd probably set your camera setting a little further back in 15, 30 seconds, then you're not getting a couple thousand pictures. Yes. Yeah, and it's great concentrates deer to one area so you get a lot of trail camera pictures good for you know the health and nutrition of the deer and also good you know deer inventory what survived what hasn't survived and another thing is you lay these blocks out chances are they'll shed their antlers there if you get lucky i mean ethan had what two sheds found on his block last year so i mean for in terms of shed hunting that's a great aspect as well Now that we got the pans out of the oven for the first 15 minutes, we're going to take a wooden spoon, anything, we're going to stir them up, and then we're going to put them back in the oven for another 10 minutes. So have a pot holder ready because the pans are still hot. Just want to stir them like this. Don't break them off the edges. Pull it towards you. Try not to make them too big of a mess. It's really easy to if you do clean it up. Break them loose, get those big chunks. This just allows it to cook the inside a little bit better. Repeat that process for this pan. So 
So after you've stirred them, we're gonna put them back in the oven. And then we're gonna set the timer for another 10 minutes. Then let those cook and once they get done, I'm gonna put them into the bucket. Timer goes off. We're gonna take it out of the oven. We're gonna take it out of the oven now. Careful the pans are hot and they're also flimsy. You can burn yourself quite easily. Take them out. Put them on top of the oven. Careful not to spill. If it happens, it happens. Put your new pans in. Set your timer for 15 minutes. And you just repeat that process. Then. So we're gonna have them in the oven for 15 minutes. We're gonna take them out, we're gonna stir them, put them in for another 10 minutes. These ones are already done. So we're gonna take your bucket, that right, and your fried vegetable oil around. Set it down. Careful these pans are hot. You're just gonna take your spatula and you're gonna scoop. Now, I tend to do it like this. You just fill your bucket up with all of it. And then you'll start tamping. All right, I've taken them out of the oven. Just dump it into the bucket. Take one pan, dump it in, then you just start tamping. Once you get it packed hard enough, then you can slowly dump the next pan in, or you can just dump it all in. It just all depends on how hard you want it, how hard you want to pack it. All right, now we got to pack down pretty hard, as you can see. It's not penetrating the bucket very much. So now we'll go ahead and slowly add the next pan, probably dump about half of it in, pack that down and add the rest. Now that we got half the pan in here, we'll pack this down here. And then once we get this packed, we'll go ahead and dump the rest of the pan in. Pack that down hard and then you gotta let it sit, let it cool. And then in about two days, we'll be able to take it out to the field and dump it out. So after you've put the rest of the pan in and tamped it down, you wanna tamp it down good and solid. The top layer will always be slightly loose, so when you tip it back up, you know you're gonna have a little bit of a little bit of material product that falls out. But once you get it tamped good and solid, you can't really push down on it very much. Put your tamper back. And we're gonna actually bring this outside and let it sit outside and cure for two days. So we're gonna set that outside, let it cure for two days, come back, and then you'll be ready to set them out. Well, we finished the food blocks today. We got six of them done. We're gonna let them sit for two nights, uh, let them cure, let them harden up, you know, so lay them outside. Let them cool. That's, if they don't get cool enough, they'll just fall apart when you dump them out, so. Yeah, it's very important. And you know, we'll set them up, we'll put them in our properties and put trail cameras on them. They got good health benefits. 
They get great pictures for your camera. It's just an all around good thing to do in the off season. Um, two bags, two bags of mix, and all the ingredients there. We got six, six of a buck that's done. So, I mean, in terms of price, you're saving money. And you can also make them to whatever size you want. You can make them a lot bigger than what you can buy at a local store. Yep. And you can also put in different minerals and stuff that can benefit your deer in other ways. Yep. So uh, we hope this video is helpful for you. We hope you use it on your own properties. And, uh, you know, we'd love to see you do that. Um, if you could, drop a like, subscribe, comment, whatever. It helps us with content. And uh, we'll see you around. Thanks for watching JNT Outdoors.